Hi everyone, Bianca from Wayne Workspace, excited to be coming to you to explain how the internet is a bit like a village and help you understand the online space in a better way. Uh, this is my superpower. I absolutely love explaining tech in ways that uh, help creatives understand it. And hopefully this is exactly what it'll be for you. I'm going to share my screen and take you through a little presentation. So what I would like to say is Think about the internet as a village. And if we think about it like that, it's a lot easier for us to visualize what that means. So if that's the case, then there's a whole lot of different places inside um, this particular village or town. And they're all sort of interlinked, um, but they are all their own entities. And it's helpful to sort of think of them that way. In this case, Facebook is a mall. And if you think about them all, you have people walking around, you have sort of shop fronts and the sales part of the shop, um, as well as the little kiosks in between and those sorts of things. And then you have sort of the back office um, and that sort of stuff. So the people walking around are profiles. And it's important that you think about that because you don't see businesses walking around. You see people walking around. Um, and even if you see people who are advertising and those sorts of things, there's someone there under the business. Um, and so I think it's important to understand that people are profiles. Your shop fronts and the actual sales part of your shop are your business pages. You don't have a lot of control over who can come into the business, um, who can come into the shop, who can interact with your products, who can see your brand name and those sorts of things. However, the mall has certain policies, and so they have some control over who can see that. And it's important to think about it like that as well. Um, you want to entice people if you want to get people to come to your shop in the mall and you're in a part of the mall that isn't easily accessible. You may pay for advertising within the mall, and that's then pointing people to where your shop is. Otherwise, if people come into your shop, you may rely on them to talk to their friends and tell your, their friends where to go or to um, share your information. And that's the same sort of thing that we do in Facebook if you're using Facebook as a business. Your back office or a private room or something like that is like a Facebook group. Um, also, if you rent um, a conference space in a mall or something like that, it's closed doors, it's by invitation only. Sometimes you may open it up to the public if you think about things like a bookstore having a book reading. They may open it to anyone and if people are walking past, they can come in. That's something like a public group. Whereas a private group would be support groups or groups that meet for training or those sorts of things. And they happen in behind closed doors. And you as the business owner have control over who you invite into that space as well as who you interact with. And you can decide to let people in or out. So that is Facebook and I can go into a lot more, but I do also have another video that explains Facebook in far more detail. If we stay with this analogy, Instagram and Pinterest to a degree, well, um, Instagram and Pinterest are both art galleries, but they're sort of quite different art galleries. Instagram is more of a um, modern art gallery. There are individuals and businesses. Um, it's changing a lot. The images move very quickly. You're able to interact with the artist, um, but it's quick and it's moving and it's changing all the time. Um, there's some uh, performance art, there's visuals, there's those sorts of things. Some things live for a little bit longer than others, but basically it's ever changing um, and it's a very visual platform. So people are moving through fairly quickly. Um, the art is changing quite a lot. Um, you decide if you want to interact with the artist or not. Um, a lot of people don't even come up close and read the little information about the picture. They're really just there looking at the imagery and when something strikes their fancy, they go in and read the information. So you're needing to draw attention visually when it comes to Instagram. Again, you've got people and businesses. Um, very similar to an art gallery, you may have an art broker that promotes a whole lot of artists. Um, and that would be kind of the equivalent of a business. Or, and you also are interacting with individual artists who maybe have one or two paintings in the gallery and those sorts of things. But it's a very visual platform, um, performance arts, as well as static. 
Um, and you don't have um, again, similarly to Facebook, you don't have a lot of control over who sees what in the art gallery. Someone walks into the art gallery, there's loads of rooms with lots of changing um, designs. And every time they come into the gallery, it's rearranged and is different. So that's kind of a sort of clever way to think about Instagram. If we move into Pinterest, it's more of a traditional art gallery, but it's a huge art gallery and it is ever-changing and uh, well sorry it's not ever-changing it's got lots and lots of rooms and they're all interconnected and you can get to different rooms by following sort of themes and those sorts of things and that's kind of what Pinterest is but unlike Instagram where it's ever-changing and you can't sort of come back to the same things over and over again this art gallery is um, you can sort of curate the rooms that you're interested in. And those are sort of the boards, your themed rooms. Um, and far more so than Instagram, your art lives forever here. So somebody could come into uh, Pinterest and find a pin that you posted 5, 10, 15 years ago and follow the information on that and add it to their gallery and those sorts of things again you've got profiles so you're following people and your boards on Pinterest are essentially like themed rooms again a very visual platform people are only clicking on images that draw them in um, they're only reading the information or following links and those sorts of things if they are truly interested in it but in this case the art is available for a long time which is why I've got the difference here of kind of a more traditional art gallery for Pinterest versus a kind of more um, modern art, interactive art gallery for Instagram. In this vein, LinkedIn is a conference venue um, or one of those um, sort of uh, work um, environment places where everybody is there for business purposes. And I think of all the uh, social media platforms, LinkedIn is the most specific at what people are doing on the platform. There are not a lot of people or profiles on LinkedIn that are just there to socialize. Um, if you think about um, Facebook and Instagram and even Pinterest to a degree, there's a wide variety of people using the platform. Some people are using it to socialize. Some people are using it to plan personal things, some people are using it to, uh, for business, some people are using it to find service providers. LinkedIn is probably the most focused on being business oriented. So if you think about LinkedIn as a conference venue, once again, the people are profiles, the people in the conference venue are actual profiles, it's the people interacting, you can leave reviews for people, you can interact with people, you can um, rate people on their um, skills and those sorts of things but you're working person to person pages are like the booths at a big um, at a large conference you can go and find information about a business there might be some people that are standing in the booth that you interact with um, but the booth itself is really about sharing the information about the business there might be downloads or uh, papers that people can take away um, and it's about showcasing the business, but linked to that are the people that are in that business. So often, even if you go to um, other sort of conferences and shows and things, the business cards have someone's name on it. It's the same sort of thing. There are profiles that are linked to that business page. The speakers at the conference are those influencers or those people that you are wanting to follow, um, that you follow on LinkedIn. So you may follow pages, you may follow individuals, um, and that is where you are interacting. So again, LinkedIn is very much about business oriented. And so if you are working with corporations or companies, and that is the kind of um, information that you need to connect with, then LinkedIn is where you should be um, on social media. Twitter is sort of like speaker's corner. Um, I was on a call last night and they said to me, Twitter can be really ugly and it can. It's very quick, um, it's very quick moving, lots of short, sharp comments and a lot of strong opinions on Twitter. 
again, profiles are the people. And now with sort of Twitter spaces, it's almost like um, creating rooms that uh, people can debate in. And I think one of the biggest things with Twitter is that it is very much a back and forth. Um, and it's very quick and very short. And it needs to be an area that is working for you. Um, and your industry would need to be represented there if you are going to be on Twitter. Um, it tends to be for either for younger people or for people in the tech space. There's a lot of people on Twitter in the tech space, but also it's quite a common um, area because it has less of the walled garden feel that Facebook or Instagram have, and even LinkedIn. Um, and so Twitter kind of gives you this option to to kind of interact with and and read and research and those sorts of things without actually having to be in the space, if that makes sense. TikTok at this point is still a little bit of an unknown, um, although it is growing dramatically. Again, it's very visual. Um, all videos, again, profiles equal people. You can have business um, accounts, but again, very visual, very punchy. You want to make sure that you are imparting information very quickly on TikTok. It's very fast moving, very easy to scroll as you're going through TikTok. So you can get a lot of views without a lot of interaction. Um, so it's important as well there to, if you're going to provide value, that it is provided very quickly. Um, it's a again, a very quick moving somewhat difficult to find past tiktoks if that makes sense um, especially as you use the platform more and more and then with all of this your website is your home um, and it's your home on the internet whether you're a business or um, a blogger or anything like that your website is your home base um, it's also your warehouse if you are selling products your website is the warehouse. Even if you think about all of these platforms, um, if you are running a business on any social media platform, you are running it from your home base or your warehouse. All your roads should lead to this place. Whether you are hosted on WordPress or Kajabi or um, Wix or wherever you have your website set up, all of the social media platforms should be sending people to your home either a home that you own or a home that you rent, um, but ultimately that home or warehouse or head office is the main platform where all business should be taking place from. If you think about Facebook um, as a mall and you think about a business that has um, shops in multiple malls, they have a warehouse where they have all of the products that they sell. Um, and from that warehouse is where they control the sales in the various platforms. Even with the service-based business, there will be a head office where training happens, where um, all the bills are paid from and those sorts of things. And you ultimately want everything to come back to your website. So if you are a smaller business and you are selling on Facebook, you want people to come into your website in order to make those purchases. So all roads should ultimately lead to your home on the internet, which is your website. And you need to think about when you are posting on social media and those sorts of things about your client's journey and think about it as you would as a shopper. You, some people will be browsing and they come across something that's interesting to them. And then they're going to engage with that visual or that content, whether it's reading the information, liking it, commenting it, clicking on links, taking them to your website. And then they move into the buying. And you need to be conscious of how you're moving your clients through this process in order to get them to where you want them on the internet, which obviously for most of you is purchasing a product or service or signing up to your list. Wham Workspace specializes in helping clients with all of the above. And the specific services that we help with are social media posting. We can help you set up your accounts, post to them, make sure that they're linking all the correct ways. And we can also help you with maintaining your website and 
um, keeping the content updated, keeping the website updated, and making sure that everything is linked together. So get in touch with us if you have any questions. We would love to help you feel empowered in the online space. We look forward to hearing from you.